Today we're going to talk about African trading empires and what they have to do with the founding of the United States. Start out with some definitions. A caravan is a group of travelers, um, a group of traders traveling together. Um, if you've ever seen the minivan, a Do I think it's Dodge, Dodge Caravan, a lot of people traveling together, that's what a caravan was. They did it for safety um, and just for convenience. Um, pilgrimage, it's a journey taken for a religious reason. We'll be hearing about a pilgrimage that a ruler took. And lastly, astrolabe, it's an instrument used by sailors and it uses the sun and the stars to measure location. It's measuring the latitude from the equator, either above or below the equator. So those are the definitions we'll be using today. Places. We're going to be concentrating on Africa today. Ghana. It's a country in West Africa. It's still in existence today. Mali, an African country that thrived in the 1300s. It was actually in the same location as Ghana. Lastly, Songhai, another African country. This thrived from about 1300 to about 1500. Um, and again, the same location as Ghana and Mali. Timbuktu, it's a trading center at the southern edge of the Sahara Desert. The Sahara, the large desert in Africa, we'll be hearing about trade crossing the Sahara Desert today. And lastly, Mecca, that's on the Arabian Peninsula, and it's a city that's ho um, holy to Muslims. Muslims are um, followers of the religion of Islam. All right, so starting off in about the year 700, so I told you we'd be going way back in history to talk about the founding of the U.S., We're going way, way back. About 700, um, a country called Ghana was thriving. It was called the City of Gold. Why was it called that? Ghana had a lot of, coal, a lot of gold. Not a bad problem to have. Uh, the one problem they did have was they didn't have salt. And I know you're probably thinking, I'd rather have gold than salt myself as well, but at that time salt was very, very much needed. This is way prior to refrigeration. Africa is a very hot country. If I have meat, I need to preserve it. If I let it sit out, it's going to spoil. I can't eat it. It's wasted. If I have salt, I can dehydrate that meat and um, take all the moisture out. It's not going to rot now and it's going to last me and my family can eat this meat for days, weeks, months at a time um, until it's completely gone. Salt was important. So what they would do was they would trade their gold for salt. Um, traders from the African desert or from the Sahara desert would bring the salt, trade it for gold. And at that time, salt was worth its weight in gold. You trade a pound of gold for a pound of salt. So not such a bad deal if you're the people with the salt. Um, traders not only brought the goods like salt, they also brought their customs and their religions um, down into Ghana, into Timbuktu. And so the spread of the religion of Islam, Muslims, started pouring into that area. So it was um, a way that religion would, would spread. Uh, Ghana grew rich on taxes. The leader taxed both imports and exports. So if you were selling or, or trading or uh, trading back for goods, there was money taxed on it. So they grew very, very rich. The society, though, the, the Ghana's power declined around the year 1100. In its place sprung up Mali. Mali was larger in area than Ghana. It was on the site of Ghana, but a little bit larger. The ruler there continued the trade, but he also expanded the trade. So rather than just trading with other African countries, he now traded with Europeans. The Europeans would bring cloth and horses, which before then had not been seen in Africa, and they would trade for gold, um, for cola nuts, and um, unfortunately for um, captive slaves. Uh, slavery was nothing new. Um, in Mali, they had slaves. They traded and gave the European slaves. Um, their leader was Mansa Musa. In 1324, Mansa Musa, a devout Muslim, decided to make his pilgrimage to Mecca, that holy city on the Arabian Peninsula we spoke about earlier. Um, when he went, he did not go alone. He took a thousand people with him, 500 slaves. Each slave was uh, carrying a gold bar that weighed about four pounds. So that's a lot of gold. Along the way, they strengthened the economies of all the um, places they crossed. Um, because they, they spent their gold along the way. Um, so he strengthened the economy, he also strengthened ties with other Muslim countries, because what he did was he brought Muslims back with him, um, scholars, people that were experts in their field, to come to Timbuktu. Now Timbuktu had been known as a center of trading, now it was a center of learning. 
there was the study of astronomy, of math, of a great mosque. A mosque is a religious place where Muslims would worship. A great mosque was built there. So Mali and Timbuktu became um, just a very advanced society. Um, so Timbuktu was the center of learning. Lastly in this area, Songhai um, sprung up, same area as Mali and Ghana, much larger than the two of them. And it was a thriving economy from about 1300 to 1500. People in Europe were learning about the geography of African Asia, and that made them, once they, they knew what these places were like, it made them confident, it made them want to explore more and find out what these other places in the world were like. And that will lead to further European exploration until finally, down the road, they're going to go beyond Africa, beyond Asia, and discover a new continent that they didn't even know existed.